Howdy folks, this is going to be the review part of my video um, for my custom Sino Katana series. Uh, I'm going to do them all eventually, but uh, I usually order them two at a time, and uh, this is the first one I got, so out of the two I ordered first, so this is the first one. Um, but first I'd like to give a shout out and a big thanks to Christopher Godeasy. Um, he's the one that composed the music for this video. Um, just a good guy. He has got a great channel. Go check out his channel. Um, I'm sure he would appreciate it. I, I would appreciate it. He's a good guy. His videos, uh, got, he's a trucker, so he's got a lot of uh, trucking videos and, and uh, scenery of him trucking of, uh, all around the United States, out west. Uh, and uh, when he stops, he does some bushcrafting and uh, um, um, camping uh, stuff. So... Just a real good stuff. I love his content, and maybe you will too. So uh, head over to his channel, subscribe, give him a like, and uh, hit that bell for all notifications. Um, we'll appreciate it. So let's get down to the uh, review section. We'll start at the uh, Kashra. Um, it's a this whole motif of this katana is a vine and leaf and flower uh, motif, uh, earth, earth theme if you will but as you can see the transitions between uh, the uh, Kashira and the uh, Ito are really good Sino always does a really good job at that um, uh, they're brass fittings on this one I ordered from the medium uh, list uh, they have uh, in, from inexpensive to medium to for not it, even the higher quality ones it's got silver and gold inlay uh, they're not, you'd be surprised, they're not all that expensive. But I, I one of my customs I got coming out, I did a, got a little blingy with it and uh, ordered that. So it's going to be neat to see what that comes up like. Um, it's a silk Ito. It's all very tight. Sino always has real tight Ito. And the diamonds are fairly uh, even and uh, medium-sized diamonds. Um, the uh, Manuki are brass and a leaf vine uh, motif, the Samegawa, which is the um, stingray belly inlay under the wrap, under the Ito, is of medium quality. They have a higher quality you can get. I don't know if you can see that with the light shining in there like that. But there you go. Medium quality. It has two Makugi pins that hold the Nakago, the tang, in place. The transition between the Ito and the Fuchi are very good. It's a uh, iron suba, which uh, with the be these sino being inexpensive, uh, you don't have a big problem when you want to modify your stuff or, or tweak it out just a bit. So uh, I took a, uh, some of the expensive, more expensive katanas. Uh, you cut with them, but you don't really want to modify them too much because they're so expensive. But uh, this was roughly about three hundred and. $25, $330, but the Suba, which is a uh, vine and leaf and branch theme, uh, I took a Dremel with a wire brush to it and brushed all the uh, black coating off of it. I left the, the rim black just to give it my own personal touch and uh, just to make it my own, you know, just to uh, give it some character from the usual just blackened Suba. Uh, the transition between the Fuchi and the uh, Koiguchi is very good. Uh, they did really well on this one. Um, the Saya is, is decent enough lacquer. There's a few blemishes in there, but nothing to write home about. They have uh, three different types of uh, fittings of hardware you can get for, uh, not hardware, but uh, for the uh, Kojiri, the Kurigata, and the uh, Koiguchi, I, I usually, the, lately I've been getting brown buffalo horn, which is, I just think it sets it off really nice. Makes it really pop against the black instead of the usual black, uh, either painted black wood or black buffalo horn. And that's what they have, uh, three different options. Black buffalo horn, brown buffalo horn, and uh, uh, wood painted black. The Shiridome came loose. I had to glue that in, but uh, in, in, in expensive katanas, that's kind of the norm, I guess. Uh, the uh, Segeo is a nice thick uh, uh, Segeo. I, I don't think it's silk, but it's a nice thick quality Segeo. Um, 
uh, the the saya it doesn't or the scabbard some people call it, it doesn't thin out at all it stays the same measurements all the way which is no big deal but it's nice and smooth it leaves a bit of fingerprints here and there but that doesn't bother me all that much okay let's go to the koiguchi it's called the koiguchi because koi is a fish and it looks like a mouth so and guchi means mouth so it's they call it the fish mouth see but uh, they did that really good uh, it's, it's done fairly well I'd put a couple chips in it uh, resheathing the uh, sword forming noto but a little bit of little bit of gunk in there not gunk but just discolored there but all in all well done get to the blade here from the Monimachi which is a snotch is where the usually usual measurements come from the Kasaki this tip to the Monimachi is uh, 27 and uh, and 7 eighths from tip to Munimachi and with the Habaki to, to, to the Suba it's uh, 28 and uh, 11 sixteenths the Suka is 11 and 7 uh, 11 and 3 eighths which I asked uh, for 11 and a half so they came pretty dang close so, and my measurements that I that I put down in the order form they came within uh, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch so that's not too bad for inexpensive as they are um, the uh, sorry sorry or sorry if you want to be pretentious like myself you say sorry uh, but uh, it's got a three-quarter inch curve let's say you set that on a flat surface and you measure up at the highest point that's your uh, sorry measurement that's uh, three quarters of an inch um, it weighs uh, the Kasaki is two and three eighths two and an eighth from this Yokote line right here to the very tip is uh, two and an eighth and it's got a Madare uh, type of Hamon it uh, it's differentially hardened um, it does have a softer iron core the Habaki is a, a rain a scratch rain pattern Habaki and they're of medium quality there's like uh, probably eight or nine maybe ten different Habakis to choose from uh, All in all, it's a, a decent sword. The planes of the uh, the flats of the blade are very smooth. Uh, the one thing Sino does is, I don't know if they if they do it with the stone or if they're doing it with the uh, machine grinder, whatever they're doing. There are no ripples at all in these uh, flats of the blade. Some of my my bouquet, which is twelve hundred dollars, that has ripples in it. But some people care about that. Some people don't. Uh, I, for one, like to see a nice flat surface on the planes of the blade um, it, uh, the, so the uh, point of balance is uh, let's see it's five and an eighth from the Suba which is pretty good um, gives it a nice balanced feel um, it weighs about two pounds ten ounces I think it uh, it's definitely a uh, medium weight blade it's got Good action to it. It's very lively in the hand. Um, you can see the it doesn't flare out at the yakote like uh, some geometric yakotes are, which is okay. It doesn't bother me much. I wish it did, but not too big of a deal. Not a deal breaker. So there you have it. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything. I'm sure I did. Um, I'm gonna go in for some. Uh, cutting demonstration here in a little bit. I got some tatami soaking, so uh, just remember, everything is temporary.